Yes. Don't tell me I'm gas. I got knives in the bag. All I need is one mic, and I'm still at tip. When I spit, when I slick, leave it still mad tick. Transmission my stick, I'm automatic. Ask me when I sign, I don't autograph shit. I'm mid, that's a lie. Get the polygraph, bitch. I'm a naughty on the autobahn. They all on my drip till I'm shift. I'm about to blow like the low floors of the world trades. Kamikaze stay high like I fly two planes. I don't rap like 50 Cent, but I spit loose chains. It's an inside job when I blow up my brain. Staying in my mind with these stainless lines. When I mention my name for that nameless shine, got me all on your mind. Thank me for the time. I ain't even paid rent, motherfucker. That's fine. That's fine. Hey. My Whoever sees this and subscribes right now will get free dental floss. Your dentist is gonna love me. What's going on YouTube? It's Noxil and we're back with our reaction series. So today, today man. First off, I just want to say thank you guys for your patience. Because today, we are finally going to complete the Falling in Reverse trilogy. So today's song is called Drugs. It is the last song of the trilogy that you guys have heavily requested in the comment section. By the way, I read each and every comment, the good, the bad, the ugly. So if there's other Falling in Reverse songs you want to see me do, other artists you want to see me check out, then please post them below. Also, a quick shout out to the Patreon guys. If you guys like the content that we're doing here, if you want to support me, as you know, reactors can't monetize most of the videos that we do. So if you want to support the channel, check out the Patreon, exclusive content on there, all kinds of stuff we're building a community and a family on there so do me a favor and check that out below but anyways anyways the last part man i feel like we've been through an adventure already and the last one really left us on a cliffhanger when you had ronnie going after ronnie just in this epic fashion this collision was about to happen and it just left us wondering what's gonna be next so anyways ronnie Racky falling in reverse step back up to the plate let's see what you got Always a good sign when you start with a warning message. Do we have a warning message in front of a popular monster? Because remember that one when he transformed into his inner beast and his you know, inner monster and just started going ham and ripping apart everyone that was chasing him? And uh, yeah, that was wild. That was like watching like a horror flick mixed into a music video. So I can only imagine where we're going with this one by throwing a warning message at the beginning. All right, let's go. Oh, that's cool text. It's like futuristic text. <gasps> oh, okay. Okay. I know the drop's about to come in. You can just tell with the build, and then he's getting ready just to hit it heavy. But before that, we got to talk about the trilogy here. So at the end of the last one, which was uh, Losing My Life, right? You had that epic showdown that was about to happen, and they were about to collide. The past Ronnie with the present Ronnie or the future Ronnie, whichever one you want to label it as. But anyways, the blonde-haired Ronnie versus the dark-haired Ronnie. So there, there we see one. Right? Because it looks like the dark haired Ronnie lost at first. Like he's the one that's on the ground. That's why we start on him. But actually, he opens his eyes and he gets up. He pushes himself up. And you see the blonde haired Ronnie who is on the ground. So the Ronnie that was the protagonist of Losing My Mind with the dark hair has now beaten and won the clash with the Ronnie that we saw in Losing My Life with the, uh, with the dyed blonde hair. And that was. If I got this right, that was the, the future Ronnie, right? The Ronnie that woke up and that was representing him being in prison and being asleep. And 2033 was supposed to be his prison sentence, what it was supposed to last till. That's what you guys told me at least. So that's what that symbolism was representing. Man, I mean, there are, there are definitely layers to this. I'd be interested to hear Ronnie's thoughts um, and, you know, an interview with Ronnie on this after after doing these reactions in terms of what he was thinking and what went into some of these. Because there's I, I just love the symbolism to it. All right, let's go. Ah. Woo. What a way to start a song, because everybody's on drugs. Hit. Let the instrumentation just rock out. And what's really cool is this camera is like from here to here to here to here. It's kind of jittery. It's almost like the camera is on drugs. And what I think is happening is it looks like, hang on, let me check something. 
Yeah, okay. All right. So you see how it jumps back and forth with frames almost? But it's it's still like he hasn't moved. The camera has moved because we're using two different cameras. And basically, you put those next to each other. So you film here, and then you jump to this one. Then you jump back to this one, you jump back to this one. It creates a really cool animated motion effect to it. Nice, man. And, and what powerful imagery. Kill yourself. And there he is, hanging himself. And I love the cartoon animations, you know, like the outlines, the, the glowing outlines. I've done that in a music video, my wide music video. Man, that's, that's crazy hard to do because you literally have to go frame by frame and just slowly add more lines as you go in whatever shape that you want to draw, if you want to outline bodies or whatever's going on. And there's just crazy lines going left and right here. interesting metaphors here talking about killing yourself talking about being dead inside and now we're talking about the drugs and I think there's this face value of addiction to drugs everybody being on drugs but I think that there's deeper symbolism here to the drugs of life the drugs of society like getting everybody has their own addictions don't they some of us get addicted to attention some of us get addicted to social media to the likes to the following the level of celebrity that we're trying to achieve some of some of us literally get addicted to drugs we get addicted to other things to caffeine to alcohol there's just there's so many influences everybody has to find a way to cope because without drugs they they just can't cope really so we're all dying inside. We're only, we're all slowly killing ourselves. It's just which method are you picking to do that? At least that's what I read into it, man. I'm, I'm, I'm really deep diving. We're not even into the song yet. I got to let some more shit play. But this is, this is cool. And if you listen to the beat, man, this is like a slower laid out beat. Like the last two, he sort of took these, you know, he had the electro influences on the first one. He had the rock influences on the second one. Obviously, I know that he changes genres as he goes, but he started off with the rapping. This time, he's not doing the rapping for the first verse. Like, he's coming in and he's singing. But what's funny is that the beat underneath, it's got this bounce and this slower tempo and pace to it that would have suited better for rapping. Like, it's like almost like some hip-hop influences, hip-hop beat going on just a little bit. I hear it with the drums and the percussion underneath. But instead of rapping over it, he's singing over it. He's just he's flipping our worlds upside down, man. Such an uncomfortable feeling beginning to feel the hostility for my ability of solely becoming a villain. I just want to thank all my fans, especially without you was a death to me. I don't consider myself a celebrity, but I've been doing this shit since I'm 70. This is my destiny. This is my ah. destiny. Listen to that flow, man. That that just spitter flow. And he's coming in and out of a nice pocket right now, man. We we know this guy can spit. This guy can spit, man. And and I love some of these words that he's talking about. You know, without the fans. You know, it'd be the death of me. Like, you guys are the reasons why I'm still going. You know, even though I've had my own issue with drugs, even though I've had my own dark past, and I've had to deal with the demons in that past, you know, one of the reasons why I'm still here is because of you guys. And because of you, I'm going to keep doing this shit. I'm going to keep rapping. I'm going to keep making music. I'm going to keep screaming into the mic. I'm going to do whatever I want in terms of this genre until I'm 70, man. Rock with me. I don't consider myself a celebrity, but I've been doing this shit since I'm 70. This is my destiny. This is the best of me. It's an incredible film to grow. Letting it go. I'm letting you know. The American dream is a killing machine. All oh, those are my favorite lines right there, man. Wow. Talking about, again, we talked a little bit about this, like talking about society and the American dream and chasing the American dream. You can become whoever you want to be as long as you work hard. And he's saying that, you know, it's leading to these false expectations. And a lot of times when those dreams fall short, you know, we get depressed, we spiral out of control because what we imagine we would be as children is not what we become. And then we have these checkered pasts and we all make mistakes because we're human. But because we're setting the bar so high, we're, we're setting these goals that many of us may never achieve. And then how do you deal with it? 
you fall into addiction, you fall into a depression, you fall into different ways of coping with it, whether it's eating, some people do that, whether it's social media, whether it's getting lost in drugs themselves, there's just so many different addictions in this world. There's a really clever song, this hook, man, this hook might be my favorite hook of all three of them. I just, I, it's, it's just got that bounce and that vibe, man. Everybody's on drugs, boom. Damn, I don't want to keep stopping. I'm sorry, guys, but there's some really good lines. I have to point out the poetry here. You know, if it's killing you, then it's murdering me. Think about that word choice, right? Not saying like it's murdering you, like if it's killing you. It's almost got like a passive connotation to it. Because if you compare killing to murdering, obviously murdering is just a little bit more active. It just hits harder and heavier. So while it's killing you sort of passively, it's literally aggressively murdering me. You hear the difference in the word choice? I like that. I really like that. It's like I, I'm dying to see you dying inside when you don't even realize what's going on. You know, your death is murdering me. Wow. Two things real quick. One, the reds and the blues. We've seen those used throughout all three of these videos. I think that kind of unites it and gives it sort of this connecting feel to the trilogy with the lighting and the use of the reds and the blues. He's used that throughout. And then the second thing that I thought was really cool was we've had these different, you know, eyes being enlightened. So before, when he first died and the black sludge entered his mouth, he was floating through the air. And that Ronnie was enlightened. And then we had the Ronnie enlightened before. And now the blonde Ronnie, you know, the Ronnie who's just been killed is now enlightened now, almost like another rebirth. Accept the pain just to feel again. Like, because there's no other alternatives. You know, the only alternative is feeling nothing. You would rather feel pain and feel this despair just, just to be human, just so for the sake of feeling. And that's what happens a lot of times with people who get depressed or who spiral out of control. Like, you know, you're not, you're not winning that battle and you know that you're not, but you'd rather at least do it and feel something than just feel empty and feel nothing at all. And shout out to his daughter. He's making the cameo in this. And, you know, he's connected his daughter throughout this. And, you know, as a father myself, just kids inspire you, man. Kids keep you driven. Kids can really save you and save your life. Yo, I was not ready for that. Like, I know that we're talking about some serious issues, you know, staring down a loaded gun with this hook, killing you is killing me, right? And But there's still this balance and this vibe to it, right? It, it reminds me a lot of the first one in terms of, there's just, I don't know, with some of the sampling in the back, like I know we have the rock, but there's a certain element to it that just feels kind of retro, right? It has like that, that 80s bounce and that retro feel, but... Then all of a sudden we switch into like some serious heavy metal. And then Corey Taylor from Slipknot just comes out of nowhere. You got a close up, just dead serious face, dead pan delivery. And then wham, we, we totally switch. Just 
man, the mood changes immediately. Watch. Really? Oh, shit. Die, motherfucker. Die, motherfucker. Die, 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 die. Oh. Damn. Ooh. So now we know why we had the warning at the beginning of the video. Everybody's dead from the neck up. And you notice this time, like, Corey's eyes weren't enlightened. They weren't the white light. They turned red. That was the devil's light, right? And sort of demonic there. And he just takes the chainsaw very powerfully to himself. And he's he's finally getting rid of that Ronnie. And if I'm not wrong here, this is the past Ronnie that's winning. It's almost like accepting who you were in the past and accepting your mistakes. And that's kind of been a theme throughout this as well, you know. Yeah, I've made a lot of mistakes. I've, I've had a lot of points where I've fallen, but they've also led me to this point, to this success that I am today, to this platform that I have, to the fan base that I have. He's referencing all of these things throughout the song. It's almost like being in the matrix. You know, you have that digitalization. You hear how it like glitches for a second when she's like, oh, oh, my son. That's why I thought this was going to be like even more into the future. And this was going to be his daughter. But this is his mom. Do I know you? Mother doesn't even really recognize her child. Obviously, he's had issues with his mother and she must have not been there. And this this is his way of dealing with it and representing it within his art. I'm not here for your apologies. I'm here to thank you. I'm here to thank you for never being there. Because it made me the person I am today. And without that, I don't know where I'd be. So this is my first wow. hello. And this is my last goodbye. Wow. This is my first hello. This is my last goodbye. Imagine saying that to your own parent. That's heavy. That's heavy. And did you notice how those drums, we had sort of those EDM drums come in again that, that we've used and sampled before, and it was building. And I thought, because he delivered that so passionately, we're going to have just another crazy kick, because everybody's on drugs, boom, and come back out again. But instead, build, 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 <laughs> totally drop back down and just stay on this deep emotional level right now. <laughs> Hang on. Let us appreciate the build. So this is my up, first hello. Up, up. And this is my last goodbye. Drop. The American dream is a killing machine. Use, a, use the keys to help. Nice. It's so fucking Oh, I give up, man. I give up. Well, that really threw me off then. We had the build and then the drop. And the, the piano come in, and then we had just another crazy quick build. And this time, the drop that I was expecting happened. And did you see? I saw that very quickly, that her eyes just turned black, representing the venom within her. So did she have issues with... Wow. If I get this right, did his mom have issues with drugs? Did, did she have problems with addiction? Because that black and that toxicity representing drugs and addiction. That's heavy. It's so fucking
Yep, and that's his mom on drugs. And that was kind of spacey right there. And <laughs> this is not the best time to talk about it, but Ronnie just has a great vocal range, man. I mean, where he can go just with his singing, where he can go with his flows and his rapping and his cadence and his delivery. And then when he wants to, like, hit some of these screaming notes, too, he's just, man, he's talented. Drugs. in the first sample. Was cool and i love that little ending when the chainsaw runs you just got the blood spatter because everything just seems so nice you got the neon lights and glow and then we just add that little darkness to it but you've been asleep for a very long time didn't his daughter who was older in the future when he woke up she said that to him so now his daughter younger says it to him and is that his daughter's actual voice that's cool if he worked his daughter into the song too but his daughter saying those same words her eyes lighting up and then we have all these flashbacks and it's almost like everything the cycle is starting all over again and not only that there's these questions of did this all just happen in his mind has he been asleep through thinking while he was asleep that he woke up when actually he was still asleep when actually he went through all this he fought his past self and then now he is finally and truly waking up all this just happened in his head so it's like damn i've already been through these battles and these wars just to find out that i have to do this all over again that i have to readjust yet again You've got to be fucking kidding me. <laughs> That's cool, man. That's cool. What a cool trilogy. I love that. I love when an artist will not only take their music and tell stories, but they'll take the visuals and tell a story. And it's not just doing like one song and telling a visual story through that. It's going right. I've got three songs. I'm going to tell a story that connects and references all three. I'm going to do that through the lyrics. I'm going to do that through some of the music sampling, the musicality between them. And then I'm going to take the visuals and I'm going to connect them and tell a story in that way too. It's like... We're making a movie almost. We're making a short film. We're not just making music. You know, we're making film. We're making art. It's dope, man. Ronnie, falling in reverse? You were Knox Hill certified. So if you guys liked today's video, if you did, be sure to smash that like button. Comment down below. Any other falling in reverse songs you want to see me do, or if there's other artists you want to see me check out. I try to read all of your comments, guys. I respond to as much as I can. So please keep commenting and keep posting. Also, don't forget to subscribe notifications on so that we can keep growing, keep on the buzz, and keep doing this. Over 70% of you who watch these videos are not subscribed. If you like what you see, guys, you're here at the end. You've obviously enjoyed it. Do me a favor, hit that sub button. Also, you might think that you're subscribed if something happened with YouTube, so double check that below as always this is your reminder to stay safe to stay positive it's a crazy world out there guys but stick together and keep going i love you it's knox hill and i'll catch you in the next video i'm out